so these are the fundamentals of algorithm problem solving things the uh, these are few steps uh, we have to uh, follow uh, for solving a problems the first one is you have to understand the problem second thing is assessing the capabilities of computational devices and choosing between exact and appropriate problem solving deciding an appropriate data structures and then uh, methods of specifying an algorithm proving algorithm correctness analyzing of an algorithm and coding the algorithm so these are different uh, steps so these are the fundamental things uh, we have to understand uh, for solving any problem by algorithmic way so now you can see here uh, the first thing whatever we are uh, seeing just now and that is represented in a graphical manner so this is a uh, understanding the problem first so this is an initial step we have to do when a problem is given for you and the next thing is we have to decide the computational uh, things and what are the exact or uh, mean uh, approximate solving and then we have to uh, know what are the data structures we have to use for implementing algorithms and designing techniques we have to know and that will be uh, taken here and then uh, it follows the uh, designing an algorithm and you have to prove the correctness for what purpose you written an algorithm and that algorithm is going to done the same thing we have to prove and later we have to analyze an algorithm means how much time it is going to take and how much uh, space it is required to execute your algorithm and everything we have to go to analyze it and after that uh, we are finding an efficient algorithm then we are going to start a coding so now we are going to discuss about all these things in brief in this lecture so let's start with understanding the problem suppose uh, if you are working for a uh, software and industry like you are working in an mnc uh, like your client is given some problem for you first so before you are going to make an implementation thing and everything so what the first step we have to do you have to understand the given problem by the client first so then you have to collect all the requirements and uh, you have to uh, have any questionnaires or queries is there like you have to uh, sit and uh, connect with your client and you have to keep on questioning what are the things you require to understand that particular problem and you can do that in a repeated process and uh, you can take uh, any previous existing solutions are there for a particular problem and you have to take out those things and uh, uh, try to analyze that and uh, check for all the cases uh, and uh, uh, and any any queries we have and we are going to talk with the client and uh, get a clear picture on the problem first and then uh, you have to decide uh, what kind of input you have to uh, given for your algorithm and what we are getting an expected output and you have to uh, understand that and the very important thing is it have to uh, give a exactly the range of instances that your algorithm needs to handle means uh, you are given one algorithm and that algorithm is can work for this particular thing it cannot work for more than that suppose see for example uh, suppose uh, we given one algorithm uh, for uh, ticket booking in online for a bus so we know like what are the constraints we have with the bus so those constraints we are taking like uh, bus is having uh, a limited number of seats and we are going to uh, purchase those bus tickets in different modes like online and offline mode so how many tickets you are going to put in online you have to decide the things first and then uh, different constraints you have to take to try to understand the complete problem first and then uh, within that range only you are given a solution so your algorithm is not going to work more than that and that thing is also very important so after uh, understanding the problem before you are going to start a writing of, uh, your algorithm you have to know that for what particular instance your algorithm is going to work okay so that is the understanding of the problem and then uh, the second thing is assessing the capabilities of computational device so computational device is nothing but so now you are going to execute your algorithm so that algorithm is going to execute some machines so we have a different kind of machines are there like uh, one human machine and then uh, uh, the second one is on a random access machines so uh, one human machine which is uh, 
I mean, uh, uh, introduced by uh, this uh, John Van Newman, uh, which is work with a uh, like a serial execution way. It cannot execute the instructions in a random access manner, right? So you have to decide to where means the which kind of machine uh, your algorithm is going to work. And then uh, what kind of algorithm it is, that is, uh, it is going to execute your algorithm in a sequential that is line to line or else it will be a parallel algorithm. And that capability also we have to know. And then, so after designing this uh, particular algorithm for a particular tool, so now the uh, question is that how fast your algorithm is going to work on that particular machine, right? So in uh, earlier days, when you go with a machine learning concept, like uh, we don't have an advanced technologies uh, for learn, uh, for make a machine to learn. At that time, uh, for uh, making the things to learn by a machine, it takes hours of time, right? So nowadays it is, uh, it becomes very easy and uh, uh, the algorithms, it makes everything is very simple and it is going to, uh, I mean, uh, it makes your machine to learn with a very short period of time. So that's what is also required that what kind of machines you're going to execute your algorithm and how much time it is going to take. Either it is going to execute your algorithm is fastly or else it will take very slow for executing your algorithm. And that things you have to consider here. And then uh, the capability of your machine also, like uh, the storage capability and everything you are going to consider at this stage. And the next thing is just choosing between the exact and approximate solution problem solving. So like uh, your algorithm is designed uh, for a particular instance of input. And now the question is whether it is going to solve your problem exactly or else it will give you an approximate solution. So exactly means, uh, suppose uh, if I'm going to divide uh, some values, now it will give you an exact uh, coefficient for me. And sometimes, uh, see, for example, if you go with uh, finding the root values, right, uh, so square root values. So you can take uh, the square root values for uh, uh, like 9 or 25 or 36. You can get an exact result. Whereas you can take uh, finding a root value for root 2, root 3. You're not getting an exact result. You're getting an approximate solution for that. So now, uh, after uh, you're choosing the computational device for your algorithm, the next step you have to uh, give, like your algorithm is work for giving an exact solution for what kind of input, or else it will give you an approximate solution for what kind of input you have to uh, tell exactly. And then the, the next step is to deciding an appropriate data structure. So for implementing your algorithm, you have to keep your input and you have to uh, store your input. And then uh, in a computational time, you have to uh, make some steps. So for that, we need uh, the data structures to keep your information temporarily. So for that, uh, we have to know uh, what kind of data structures we are going to use. Like you can use an array or linker list or trees, graphs. There are different kinds of data structures we have. So what kind of data structures you're going to use for uh, your algorithm, you have to mention that is also very important. And then uh, algorithm designing techniques. So there are different techniques to solve a particular algorithm. You can take any problem. There are different ways you can solve that particular problem. So these are different kind of uh, techniques uh, which is mentioned here. So those will be of divide and conquer, greedy method, dynamic programming, backtracking, branch and bound, brute force, decrease and conquer, transform conquer, space and time trade-off. These are different uh, kind of techniques. Uh, suppose see, for example, in divide and conquer method. So we have to divide the given problem into sub-solution, means sub-problems. And those sub-problems will be solved individually. And then after that, we have to match all the solutions of the sub-problems, we get the solution of the complete problem. So that strategy is given by the divide and conquer. But as a greedy method. So uh, we are searching for a different solutions. We don't stop with a single solution. We are trying to uh, get a multiple solution for the same problem. There you are going to find which is feasible and which is an optimal. So it depends on that you have to choose your problem solution. So whereas like uh, transform and conquer. So transform and conquer is a technique like where we have to 
uh, take a problem and that problem is going to be converted into a problem which we know already and then uh, we have to uh, try to solve that particular problem and later you're going to match it. So these are different kind of uh, techniques uh, for uh, designing your algorithm and depends on uh, the requirements you have to choose any one of these techniques to implement your algorithm. And coming to proving of correctness. So once an algorithm has been specified and you have to prove for the correctness. So that is nothing but the testing. So testing is nothing but suppose you are uh, implemented one algorithm and that is going to find uh, the even numbers between uh, like uh, 1 to 100. So whatever the value you are given in between 1 to 100, your algorithm is able to generate uh, the even numbers between that. If it changes the range, now your algorithm, it may not work because you have written an algorithm for that particular range only. But what your correctness will say, like whatever the uh, specifications you are given for your algorithm. So now you are going to check, means you are going to test. You have to give a value in between 1 to 100 and you have to check whether your algorithm is going to work perfectly or not. So that is a thing uh, we have to do after... Uh, implementing an algorithm and the notation of the correctness uh, for an approximation algorithm is less straightforward than it is a for exact algorithms because uh, we know already like we are uh, written different kind of algorithms either, either it is give you an exact solution or it will give you an approximate solution so for an exact solution you can say like your algorithm correctness yes it has given a correct answer whereas an approximation we can't say exactly like uh, uh, the approximation things so for that, we have to give uh, some uh, like error measurement, like uh, in between these ranges, we are getting, we are expecting the output like that. We have to provide it, uh, the correctness uh, proving in that approximate algorithms. And then the thing is analyzing. So analyzing is nothing but now you are implemented your algorithm. So you have to check for the analyzing of your algorithm. So that is finding the efficiency, how efficiently your algorithm is going to work and what kind of input it is taking and for that kind of input, how much time it is going to take and how much space it is going to execute your things. And these everything you have to consider in this step. So now uh, the factors uh, we have to use for analyzing an algorithm is time efficiency, space efficiency, simplicity of your algorithm and the generality of your algorithm. So these are the things we consider. Uh, for analyzing an algorithm. So time efficiency is nothing but how much time it is taking to uh, execute your program, execute your algorithm. And a space efficiency will say how uh, space, means how much space it requires for executing your algorithm. Because uh, see, you can take any problem. There are different uh, ways you can implement the, the solutions by using different kind of algorithms. Right. So in every algorithm, it follows their own way of uh, solving the problem. So for those algorithms, it may differ with the time it takes to execute your program or else it may differ the space it will take to execute your uh, steps. Right. So depends on that, you can choose the efficiency of an algorithm. So simplicity. So means uh, you cannot write uh, an ambiguity uh, steps in your algorithm. Your algorithm, it must be simple. Everybody can understand your algorithm when they are trying to solve your problem with uh, the algorithm you are designed. And the last thing is coding, right? Uh, so coding, so it will be the last step because uh, as of now, uh, like, you know, uh, uh, what are the uh, problem statement and you clearly understand that. And after that, what kind of machines your algorithm is going to work, you decided. And uh, the range of input it will take, you are already decided. And the proof means the correctness of, uh, means proving the correctness of your algorithm is already considered. And after that, how much time uh, means the efficiency, the analysis, all the things we uh, considered, right? So, and after that, now you start designing of your algorithm by coding. So for that coding, you have to use different kind of uh, programming languages like C, C++, Java, Python. Like we have a different kind of uh, programming languages at that. Now you're going to implement your algorithm by using these programming languages. And the transition of these algorithms to program can be then either incorrectly or very inefficiently that implementing an algorithm correctly is necessary. 
right? So the algorithm power it should not reduce by an efficient implementation. And the operations uh, uh, you have to take in uh, uh, for reducing the time. Uh, what we have to do is we have to use a uh, like a cheaper operations, right? Uh, we have to use for implementing your code, and then uh, for improving your speed. So you have to use uh, some uh, constant factors. Uh, so whereas a better algorithm can make a difference in running time. So by order of magnitude and but uh, once an algorithm is selected, that is 10 to 50% uh, speed up it may work uh, is an efficient algorithm. So it is very essential uh, to write an optimized code uh, to reduce the burden of the compilers because we know that a compiler is a translator which will take your human understandable language to machine understandable language it is going to convert. So if you are given an optimal code, means a very less uh, number of lines of code, then the speed it is going to be increased, right? So these are the measurements we have to consider by writing a code for your algorithm. So thank you. So uh, these are the fundamental things we have to know uh, for solve your problems using arithmetic way.